Welcome everyone, good morning. Thank you all for being here. It's great to see so many names propping up. Um, so we'll use the, the Hoover chat um, as we go along through this session. So do, do chat away with each other in there. Tell us where you are, um, why you're here, your name, all that kind of stuff. Because if so many of you, it'll take a while for everything to load up. Yep. I'm not seeing an option to put captions on. Is that possible for someone to, to do? Thank you. Fabulous, so we'll give it a little bit more, another minute or so for people to get in and then we'll, we'll get started with our first session of the Congress. Amazing people from Munich, Sydney, Netherlands, fantastic. Okay, brilliant. So um, just briefly to introduce what we'll go through in this in this first session. Um, I'm Cleo, uh, I was formerly the volunteer director of Basic Income Network Scotland, our main host organization for the Congress this year. And I'm uh, now co-founder of the Basic Income Conversation. Uh, Massive, massive welcome once again to all of you. Really excited to see see so many people here and to connect at this Congress over the next four days. We've got so much good stuff to get through. And that's what we're going to spend a bit of time this morning going through, just given a bit of context to, to how this Congress came about, uh, what's going on in Scotland, and then also what to expect from the program and how to get the most out of this online, this first online Basic Income Earth Network World Congress. Um, and staff, I'm going to hand over to Jamie to give us a bit of an introduction to the Scottish context. Thank you so much, Cleo, and it's fantastic to have everyone here. Uh, it's quite hard to believe that this is happening, and certainly not happening in the circumstances we'd envisaged when we first uh, bid to bring the Congress to Scotland. So I'm very disappointed we're not all together in Glasgow. Um, as I'm sure most of you would know, you would have had a very, very warm welcome to Scotland, uh, but hopefully in future we'll get as many of you as possible over here when the world maybe is, is a bit more open to, to traveling. But I think it has still given us the opportunity to at least connect and engage with each other in these difficult times, but also at times where there's a huge surge in interest and importance for basic income as a topic. And I think over the next few days, we're really gonna get a chance to explore that and not just to, to talk, not just to, to hear what has been happening, but as the Congress has been themed to look at making an idea into reality, how do we actually put this into practice uh, around the world? Uh, and obviously, although we're biased here in Scotland, I think we do have a fantastic opportunity to reflect on the progress, the impact that we've been seeing here over the last few years. So I'm just going to briefly run through some of the things that have been happening for us, the way that we've seen things jump uh, very quickly, but through very hard work of a lot of people involved in this, this Congress and others. Uh, and hopefully look at where that opens some of the possibilities for us that we want to explore with you, as well as learning what's happening in so many other parts of the world. So although, as we know, basic income is a very old idea, one that's been around for, for hundreds of years, I think it's fair to say in Scotland, whilst there had always been interest and activity, it's only recently that it's picked up the traction, the energy, and become such a mainstream uh, topic of political and civic interest. So although people like Mike, who will be talking uh, shortly, who's involved in the panel, Annie Miller, who's involved over the, uh, the next few days, uh, and the late Ailsa Mackay, who's a Scottish economist, have been doing a lot of work exploring some of the, the deep issues around basic income over recent years, uh, really had not picked up 
uh, as I say, mainstream uh, interest or attention. Scottish Green Party probably been the only real political supporters for quite a long time. And it wasn't an idea that it was getting picked up much. And so really, I suppose, in, in the end of 2015 into 2016. So I think I want to cover three key for me um, steps that we've seen occur over the last few years to explain the context we're in. So as I mentioned, 2015, Fife Council, so that's an area to the north of Edinburgh in Scotland, uh, had explored something what they called the Fairer Fife Commission, uh, an opportunity to look at ways that could make uh, Fife a fairer, more equitable place for the people who live and work there. And it made a number of recommendations, one of which was to test out basic income uh, in a small town in Fife. And at the time, I think, even though there were a number of recommendations, that was the one that picked up uh, the most interest uh, and excitement. It really started the beginning of a conversation that developed over 2016. We had uh, Press Guy Standing, who will be contributing and who many of you will know from his, his work on basic income over many years, uh, give a major talk in Scotland that picked up some interest. But critically, in November of 2016, we saw the launch of Basic Income Network Scotland, Scotland's national body for basic income, its BN affiliate and a main driving force for volunteer activity in the country. Uh, that took place in Glasgow and coincided with Glasgow City Council, so Scotland's biggest city, uh, announcing through the work of Councillor Matt Kerr, who was the leader in social justice at the time, that they would also be interested in piloting basic income within the city. Uh, and that represented a huge step forward to not just have an area like Fife, which had put a, a lot of effort and work and has done over the years into what a basic income might look like, but also Scotland's biggest city, started to show that there was this groundswell of interest and opportunity, that this wasn't just an interesting provocation, but actually potentially offered a uh, space for challenging some of the deep issues that we face in Scotland. Uh, and I think coincided beautifully with the launch of, of Basic Income Network Scotland, which really drove that conversation over the next few years. One of the key characteristics for me of the basic income discussion in Scotland since 2016 is that it's been led by civic society, by academia, not by political parties. Don't get me wrong, politicians are important. We're going to see a few of them talking over the next few days. They're critical for helping to, to make that reality happen. But this wasn't a party political issue. This was led by community activists, by volunteers, by academics, by people really looking to make a difference to the places they lived and the people they worked with and lived around. And I think that has really set the tone of discussion and debate here in Scotland uh, and set us up very nicely for, for moving forward. The next critical step uh, for me was in 2017. The Scottish Government announced in their programme for government, their annual statement of the policies they're going to look to explore and implement, that they would be putting a quarter of a million pounds into a feasibility study into the idea of carrying out basic income experiments uh, in Scotland. This was a huge step forward, and I'm delighted that the, the next session after this, the main plenary, will be actually going into detail about the important work that that feasibility group uh, carried out and, and uh, delivered in their final report. It also represented that significant step forward of government taking a direct interest in the potential of basic income for Scotland. The idea that, yes, it's not a silver bullet, it's not going to, to magically solve everything. Perhaps this could be the foundation to a new social contract. I mean, in 2017, when the feasibility study was launched, it was very much the case that government were very clear that it wasn't that they supported the idea as such, but they were definitely keen to explore what it might look like. Uh, and as I say, that really not only shot forward the debate here in Scotland, but started to drive it across the rest of the UK and actually put Scotland very much onto the map in terms of the global discussions. Uh, and as I say, I very highly recommend that you take part in that next session to really go into the detail uh, of what was explored within that. I think fast forwarding from that process, obviously the, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, has had a huge, huge impact on the discussion here in Scotland. Whilst first and foremost, the pandemic has been a, a human tragedy, the, the loss of life, the impact on our ability to move, to function and to connect with each other uh, has been hugely impaired as we're seeing from the very nature of this Congress. It has also opened up spaces to challenge the existing uh, structures, economies, approaches to social security and society that we have in place. I would say in Scotland, it's probably shifted the debate forward by about five years. And so going into a pandemic, where, as I said, the Scottish Government, where Nicola Sturgeon, First Minister, had talked about basic income as an interesting idea, one to explore, we very quickly moved to a position where governments and other politicians were talking about basic income as a policy that needed to be delivered, that had to become a part of a new foundation, a new social contract in Scotland, that the impact of the pandemic 
the fact that governments were spending money on furlough schemes in the UK or on, on providing money directly to their citizens had started to show the real need and opportunity that a basic income could offer. Uh, and it's dramatically shifted that debate. So whilst we expected when we had put in the bid to, to bring Congress to Glasgow, that we would be able to talk about a very positive and supportive political scene here in Scotland, the situation now, having recently had Scottish parliamentary elections, is that four out of our main five political parties all express public support for basic income as a, a policy, that we have a majority of our parliamentarians in the Scottish Parliament now in favour of basic income, that we're seeing a surge of support and interest in pilots and experiments across the rest of the UK as well, whether that's with the First Minister of Wales and his public support for, for pilots there, cities across England uh, and colleagues in Northern Ireland as well, and really shifting that, that debate forward. Yesterday in Scotland, we had an announcement from the Scottish Government uh, that they're taking forward their policy commitment to uh, look at delivering a minimum income guarantee over the next term of the Scottish Parliament. I think it's really important to highlight that whilst uh, I'm sure many of us would have debates, concerns, discussions around the different policies that relate into each other, that this is happening within a very clear context for the governing party, the Scottish National Party in Scotland. What they've stated in their manifesto is that they want to see, they believe a basic income is a policy that needs to be delivered uh, for Scotland, but they, they can't deliver at this point due to the nature of the Scottish and British political systems as will be explored later on. So whilst they retain basic income as that goal, and I think it's critical that we work with them to, to work towards it, and we'll be hearing later today from the First Minister of Scotland about her support for that idea, they're also looking at the practical steps that can take us there. And I think that combination of practical delivery and ambitious goal is a critical one for us, not only to, to support and to explore, but also to challenge and make sure that it continues and that we don't lose uh, track along the way. So it puts us in a really powerful space, but it also raises a huge amount of questions uh, and areas for us to explore with you, our colleagues from around the world. How do we put a basic income into place in a country like Scotland? What policies does it complement and work alongside? Which do it replace? Which groups does it support and impact upon? We've seen huge uh, challenges for different parts of the, the labour force over the pandemic. We've seen impact on carers who so often are cut out of support, not thought about uh, when decisions are made politically, uh, and yet are carrying so much of the weight of society on them. How do we best support that? And our sessions coming up, they'll be looking at that. What would the delivery of this look like within the context potentially of an independent Scotland? Uh, this Congress doesn't take a stance on Scotland's constitutional future, but it's a space for us to explore that creation of a policy, that creation of a new social contract that we'll be looking at later today. We've got opportunities to look at a variety of different ways around delivery, and it's that global connectivity and space that I think is absolutely critical with this. So for me, I'm really excited to see what comes out of our discussions. I'm really excited that we're still able to be together, even if it's uh, disconnected across computer screens, but through the work that's been put in by this incredible team uh, that have delivered the Congress, uh, I think you'll find that uh, every opportunity to engage, to make new connections and friends around the world uh, has definitely been set up and hopefully will help us work towards next year's Congress uh, in Australia as well, that I know we'll be hearing from our colleagues there uh, later on. So I think Scotland is an exciting space just now. Scotland is a chance for us to really turn basic income into a reality. Uh, and it's one that can help us to learn and work with colleagues all across the world. As I said, the characteristics of the discussion and the debate here in Scotland have been led by that civic society. They've been led by that community collaboration. And we know that there's so much we can learn from what has been carried out uh, in other contexts and places as well. So I'm looking forward to connecting with you. I'm really grateful and I just want to put out my thanks to the organising team and the volunteers who've put so much into this Congress. Uh, it's a huge amount of work and I, I really am proud to see what we've started to pull together and I, I'm looking forward to seeing what develops. So I'm going to pass over to Mike next, I think, to introduce uh, some of the leadership. I'm oh, sorry, actually to Matt first, uh, who's going to welcome us on behalf of our hosts here in Scotland. But I really hope that you find this a uh, stimulating, provocative and timely Congress that you take the chance to connect with us in the committee and as many others who are involved as possible. And I look forward to seeing some of you in person as soon as we're able to in the world has opened up a little bit. Thanks very much, Jamie. That was a great introduction. And Jamie is one of the people that uh, introduced me to 
basic income not so long ago. So it's it's great to see this all coming together. So I'm, I'm Matt Smith. I'm professor of health history at the University of Strathclyde. I'm part of the Center for the Social History of Health and Healthcare. And on behalf of Strathclyde, which is helping to organize uh, this important event, I want to welcome you all from <laughs> pretty much every corner of the globe, except perhaps the Western Hemisphere, which I hope is mainly asleep right now. Um, as you might guess from my accent, I'm not from these shores. I'm originally from Western Canada. Um, so Strathclyde was founded uh, essentially in 1796, as, and one of the reasons it was founded was to be a bit of a foil for some of the more academic, um, philosophical, theoretical universities that were in Scotland already uh, at Glasgow, Edinburgh, Aberdeen, and St. Andrews. It was founded as a place of useful learning. And I think this, is, this conference is a way in which we as a university, and certainly the Scottish academic community, can live up to that motto of being a placeful, place of useful learning. Strathclyde has, has five values, and it occurred to me, I'll, I'll tell you them first, I suppose. So we're meant to be innovative, ambitious, bold, collaborative, and people-oriented. And it occurred to me at some point planning this conference that you know, basic income really taps into all of those values quite genuinely. Um, and I think that that's quite an interesting connection there for our university. I, I want to thank in particular um, the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, which has provided the funds to make this effectively a free event for the hundreds of people that are going to join across the globe. Now, when we were originally planning this event, um, Mark Wilbur, and, and thanks very much to Mark, because it, it was his idea to uh, give some of this money uh, to me to use for the conference, we thought, yeah, maybe we'll have a reception or maybe uh, it'll help fund a, me a, a meal or something like that. Well, lo and behold, things have changed and it's basically paid for all the infrastructure, IT infrastructure support to, to make this a free event. So thanks very much to Mark and especially to uh, Carolyn Marley for all the organization that she's been doing it. This, is, this takes an awful lot of not just effort, but also thinking through all the various aspects of, of putting on an event like this across all the different time zones and everything. So I do hope that from an academic perspective that this Congress helps to fuel some ideas for uh, future research, whether it be PhDs or postdocs, to make sure that we keep, you know, the academic side of basic income going along and we try to explore it from different angles. I myself, I, I mentioned I'm fairly new to basic income. I only really heard about it in 2014 when I attended the new harm, the uh, 200th anniversary of Robert Owen's New Harmony. Uh, utopian settlement in, in Indiana. Uh, one of the plenaries for that was from sociologist, the late uh, sociologist Eric Olin Wright. And the topic of his, his talk was 20 reasons capitalism will be dead by 2030. And I was a bit jet lagged and I'm listening to these, all these ideas about free bus passes and this and that and thinking this isn't really convincing me. And then he started talking about basic income and all of a sudden something clicked and I realized that this was, this was a real possibility. And like Jamie said, I don't think I would have anticipated that 2030 would be a realistic goal. Well, who knows, maybe, maybe that could be the case. But I guess the other thing and speaking as a historian is that Often we do find that momentous changes in terms of how we uh, set up the contract between ourselves and the state often come out of times of crisis. So the NHS, the National Health Service in the UK came very much out of the Second World War. Um, coming out of the 1960s, there was actually a push for basic income coming from those interested in the mental health of children. Um, and it was an idea that, uh, that uh, Nixon thought about as well. So often coming out of times of crisis, we see these momentous shifts in how we want to organize our society. And I'm hopeful that this, 
you know, COVID and, and a lot of the other crises that we're seeing, whether it be Brexit or the decline of democracy in many parts of the world, we see this as a way of recalibrating ourselves as regards the state and coming up with a fair way of, of, uh, of setting up society. So I'm really thrilled to be here. I'm fascinated by all the talks and and it was great going through all the amazing uh, uh, proposals that went that came to us from all parts of the world. Um, we were almost playing bingo to see which part, which country had the most proposals, and it was you know getting into the teens and twenties very quickly. So it's it's great to have you all here virtually. The sun is actually shining in Glasgow, so it's a real shame that you're not here physically. But uh, maybe some of us. We'll uh, turn our screens to the window every once in a while and, and prove that to you. And you can imagine yourself sitting on the banks of the Clyde, drinking a tenants or something like that, and uh, and chatting to someone from another part of the world about how we can make this a world a better place. So thanks from me and welcome uh, to Strathclyde and to Glasgow and Scotland. Thanks very much, Matt. Uh, my name is Mike Danson. I'm co-chair of the local organizing committee for the congress and i'm also chair of basic income network scotland which jamie's already referred to and um, the other co-chair is cleo who who has just reappeared thankfully otherwise we'd have had to, to wing it for the rest of the hour um i want to add our our thanks to to many people first i'll just give a very brief introduction to to bins Basic Income Network Scotland. As Jamie said, we were been around for quite a number of years, but we formalised that in 2016 uh, with these two launches, one in Fife, one in Glasgow. And we, we continued our activities slowly building. And then we had an influx of young volunteers, lots of enthusiasm and commitment. Um, and that's been important in two ways. One, because we felt confident enough, along with Jamie and others, to, to bid to hold this Congress, but also it's given us the, the foundation for progressing, promoting the idea of basic income across Scotland. So BINS, Basic Income Network Scotland, is a charity, um, and our main aims are advocacy, advocating for basic income, and educating people. So if you have a look at our website, and it's on a lot of the material, You'll see there some of the arguments for base income, um, lots of materials. We've run a number of workshops around mental health with Matt at Strathclyde. Um, and we've done it generally on base income and homelessness, base income and enterprise, employment, and so on. You can see a lot of materials there. Um, the, and the other, because we'd recruited, um, a number of volunteers, which really gave a lot of the impetus to Basic Income Network Scotland over the last few years, that's given us the foundation to be able to put this Congress on. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the Local Organising Committee is, is formed around BINs, but we also have included, or great to have on board and partner with, um, Basic Income Conversation, um, and particularly Cleo, who's been a huge amount of work for this. Jamie Cook, who's the Royal Society of the Arts, Commerce, and I forget the other one. It's a very, very long time. It's for the advancement. It's been around for an awful long time. Um, and Jamie's been one of the main proponents of base ink for a number of years in Scotland. Um, and as we've just heard from Matt, the, the tremendous support we've had from Strathclyde where a couple of years ago, we were talking about which lecture theatres would be using at the moment, how their meals would be organised, and things changed. And the third major um, support we've had is mustard seeds, and thanks very much to Sarat and others who've, who've given some funding, which has allowed us to add around the edges. So it's a very different Congress than what we'd expected to have. Um, it's virtual because it has to be, it's online. <clears throat> But that's meant we've been able to bring in people from literally around the world at no cost to yourselves. We're still open for donations, thank you very much, which is allowing us to add extra things and particularly to be able to promote and prolong the 
the Congress at the other end with materials that will still be accessible and so on. Um, put it mildly, there are many challenges of organizing any Congress, any conference. I've been involved in them for 40 years or more. Um, the largest I've ever done physically is 450. We're double that, at least here. We have 250 odd speakers. Um, we're bringing people literally together at the same time from around the world, but sat at home in your office or whatever. And those give much different challenges than anything we could have learned from before compared with many, many other conferences, congresses. Um, as we're going to hear in a minute from Elise and from Australia, this was the Congress was meant to run last year in Australia. So we've picked up, there was nothing last year. We're this year, it's in, in the Southern Hemisphere next year. Um, and we'll hear about that. Um, as I said, we're online for the first time. We think this is the biggest ever basic income Congress conference in the history of the world, which gives a real note of, of how important it's become as a concept but as, as Jamie said, moving from idea to reality. Um, and it's great. We have so many here from Korea, from Latin America, Mexico, Brazil, and so on, who are putting into reality basic income on the ground. So we're seeing pilots and experiments around the world. And a major part of this Congress will be sharing those experiences, the knowledge, the understanding, and so on. Just beforehand, back to Cleo. Just to say um, a huge thanks to, to the volunteers. And the, this literally couldn't have happened without them. And they're volunteers. They're bringing the same philosophy of volunteering as underpins basic income, about solidarity, about commitment, altruism, about doing things for others without payment and so on. And partly because we get something back from doing that. So to the 20 volunteers, but particularly to Cleo Goodman and to Timoth Timothea Armour, or Tim, um, who we can't see at the moment, they've done a huge amount of work. Um, and it it's, it's, has been fantastic. As I said, has been chair and organised big congresses before. I've never had this sort of support from a team, and they've done it with great humour um, and with discretion and so on, on their behalf, I'd like to thank them. And I'll hand back to Cleo. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, finally, Caroline Marley, of course, at Strathclyde, who's been tremendous in acting and liaising between ourselves and Strathclyde University. So thanks, Strathclyde, and thanks to Caroline and Matt. Thank you, Cleo. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, uh, I must concur. What a wonderful group of people. We have the absolute privilege to work with, not just from our own volunteer team that hopefully one day we'll meet in person because we've been working hard together over this last few weeks, but haven't looked each other in the in the eyes, in the flesh. Um, but also, you know, our colleagues at BN around the world and also every single one of you who are turning up to, to participate in this. This is, you know, a shared experience that we're creating together and we'll get what we give uh, for this, as I'm sure the last 20 years of Congress has, has, has been the same. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about the the tools that we're using during the congress and again like how we can get the most out of those um the first step is is joining session so you've all made it past that big hurdle so i'm not going to go into that too much but i'm really impressed that we've got over 100 people here at nine in the morning that shows real dedication to learning a new tool so thank you thank you for that and um, we hope hoover is is really usable i think i think we've, we're seeing lots and lots of chat in the on the community boards already and, and lots of people here so Hopefully that's being evident so far, but if you do have any questions um, or if you have any, any problems using it, then, then get in touch. Uh, team at cbin.scot is probably the best, uh, best email address or even Twitter, actually, if you're really struggling to get in. But if, you're man if you've managed to get into Hoover, uh, ask all your questions in there because then as we answer them, they'll become a resource sheet that everyone can access. So if they have similar problems, they'll be able to, um, to just scan through that and find the solutions. But hopefully there won't be any problems. Um, so 
yeah, we're, we're, if you're a speaker, we've sent around a speaker pack and we're also very, very grateful for you lending your expertise and your time over this four days. As Mike said, we've got 250 people doing so. This is going to be such a rich four days of, of insight. Um, we're asking speakers to join calls 10 minutes before their events are scheduled to start, to chat to the volunteer team, and make sure everything's scheduled and ready for attendees. Um, the other thing that you can do through Hoover is speak directly to each other. So you'll have been asked to create a profile. Um, if you've if you've not done that, it's worth putting a little bit of a bio about yourself in there. I know sometimes that can be a bit of a difficult thing talking about yourself, but you're all great, and we, uh, we should be explaining why we want to chat to each other. And I'm sure that's that's absolutely true. So. Uh, you know, use that profile to sort of explain to people how you want them to contact you or, or how they can keep in touch with you, what you want to talk about through the Congress, all that kind of stuff. You can privately message each other. So if you if there are particular people you want to connect with, send them a message. If there's conversations you want to have, you can either create group chats or you can you can use these community message boards to, to start a thread on a particular topic and really get into that. So even out with the 85 sessions, uh, you can create more opportunities to, to get into the details of basic income while we're all together over this next few days. Um, yeah, and of course, exchange contact details, you can set up your own Zoom calls, you can, you can do all that kind of stuff, which will be, I guess, the equivalent of going for a coffee or, or whatever if we were here in person. As Mike's mentioned, um, we've got a wonderful volunteer team. They'll be in most of the papers sessions to, to host and to moderate them, if that's what the speakers want. Um, and they're, they're very well versed in, in what we're doing here at the Congress and hopefully very well versed in the, the technology, although we're all learning that a little bit still. So reach out to them if you need anything, if you have any questions. Um, yeah, there'll be there'll be a fantastic support. And we yeah, like I say, we've we've worked really hard to make it a good experience for everyone so so uh if it's not going well <laughs> like let us know your feedback but also yeah positive and and constructive feedback on on how we could do things slightly differently and we'll all work together to make the most out of this time um we are here to help and during the sessions you'll be able to you know privately message volunteers and they can they can chat with their colleagues to to jump on things if, if needed um but yeah, like I say, well, there's only a small team of us, so if, if it takes a bit of time to get back to you, don't don't take it personally. We're we're working as hard as we can. Um, another thing I want to say is use let's use social media. Let's show the world what we're doing here. This is really something to shout about. We've got sort of approaching a thousand people coming together to talk about basic income, to learn from each other. Let's make sure that people outside our group of which is already a significant uh, large one are aware of of what we're doing here and what we're learning. So do tag us. At, uh, the Twitter handle for, for Basic Income Network Scotland is at Seabin Scott and use the hashtag BN2021 and then we'll all be able to see what conversations are going on there and uh, yeah we'll, we'll share that and show the world what we're doing. Um, we are doing our best to record as many of the sessions as possible we're still working out exactly what that will look like when we when we publish them so hopefully we'll have a bank of uh, video resources that we can all revisit and, uh, and, and learn from forever. Uh, but we'll we'll confirm that in due course what exactly that looks like after the Congress is done. Um, but what we definitely have is six months of access to the Hoover platform. So all of the conversations that that we we're having in the community boards, they can continue for for another few months. Uh, and we can so yeah, we can we can use that tool, and then that kind of feeds feeds well into the next Congress, which Elise will be telling us about uh, shortly in Australia. So to move on to the um, to the program that we are hosting over this four days, the the reason that we're all here together, um, we just want to give a bit of a bit of a shout out to some of the sessions, but just generally to encourage you to dig through the program uh, and to attend as much as you possibly can. We don't get this opportunity to be in the same space together, albeit an, an online space, uh, very often. So yeah, make, make the most of that. This is a real real fantastic time that we have together. Um, there are three types of session. The first one is plenary sessions like this one where there's just one session happening at a time and uh, they're set up as a webinar. So a little bit more, um, the, the speakers are, are at the front of the room and, and the chat is being used for, for the smaller conversations. We then have the, the bulk of the programme are papers sessions. So we had yeah, so many fantastic uh, submissions when we did our call for papers that we've really crammed it in over the next few days to, to get as many speakers and as many of those papers presented 
So there will be between one, one and three papers that people are presenting either as a workshop or as a uh, series of talks or potentially as something uh, even more innovative than that. Have a read of all the descriptions of the sessions to, to find that out. Um, so those paper sessions, yeah, they tend to happen in parallel, so you do have to pick between them, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, lo lots to do there, lots to see there. So sign up for as many of those as possible. And the final type of session is the roundup sessions that we're hosting at the end of each day. So that would be myself and Jesse Golem from Humans of Basic Income. And we'll use breakout rooms, we'll, we'll see what, what ideas particularly uh, piqued our interest during the day and kind of create a bit of a space to have some some of those deep dive chats in a slightly un more unstructured space there and then those will also close off with a creative contribution from an artist so we've got some really fantastic people uh, contributing to those sessions from a creative perspective another part to to really make the most of um to mention the theme of the congress which i think we've uh, we've probably mentioned in passing so far but not dug into is idea to reality so we have a real mix of, um, of disciplines, of, of backgrounds at the Congress, academics, activists, advocates, uh, all sorts around, around all of those three A's. Um, and the ideas are, are what the sessions are kind of pinned around, right? So people, people presenting their, their ideas, their theories, their, their particular specific areas of interest that we'll all listen to. But, um, but we're all keen to get basic income as a reality at this point, aren't we? So that, that's what we're, we're hoping to, to move along during the Congress and uh, these spaces where we work together to think of what actions do we need to take to, to move these ideas into reality even further than they have uh, from all the hard work we've been putting in over the last few years. Um, so yeah, today, uh, Mike, I think, do you want to talk us through a bit about what's happening today in Scotland Day? Indeed, thanks very much. Um, yeah, it's traditional at these BN Congresses, um, and of course we should thank BN, Basic Income Earth Network, for firstly for awarding us the, the right to, to organise this year's Congress, um, and also for, for all the help and support they've given us over the last two years as we've struggled towards today and going online and so forth. So it's, it's traditional in these congresses to have the first day dedicated to, to the country, the city you're in, and what, what's happening there and what the interest is. Um, previous ones have been in Finland. We're all aware of the, the experiment in Finland, um, in India last time, and it's also been to Korea and so forth. So real countries where basic income's taken off had pilots, experiments, analysis, and so on. Uh, Jamie gave a very good introduction to developments in Scotland over recent years and then months and then weeks and it, it, it's almost accelerating the activities here. So we're delighted that the, the plenary which will follow this after a short break will be about the, the feasibility study that the Scottish Government sponsored um, a couple of years ago. Um, and we have various colleagues who worked on that will be presenting on what the feasibility study did. Every country, every place is different. Scotland, we have devolved powers, devolved from Westminster. So they were looking at, could we introduce a basic income into Scotland within the devolution um, arrangements we have? What would be the constraints? What would be the challenges? Who do we need to cooperate with? if it was felt we should have a basic income. Um, and their work is, is very thorough, it's long, it's very accessible, and we'll get an introduction there from the feasibility study group. Um, following that, we have a number of parallel sessions. Um, one on how would we evaluate a pilot or set of experiments in Scotland? Um, because there's an, an awful lot of things to find out as to whether a base income can be introduced. How do you get money to everybody? Um, how do you make sure that it's not dominated by, say, the male household or the, the leader? What happens to people who don't have bank accounts? What's the interaction with the tax system, the benefit system, and so on? So very thorough work in the feasibility study. And how would we evaluate a complex experiment is, is one of the sessions after that. Um, <clears throat> running through the day, we also have other parallel set, <clears throat> pardon me, other parallel sessions looking at care leavers, 
um, people with disabilities and so on in Scotland, and, and they have particular concerns about a basic income being introduced at a time when um, the neoliberal state is threatening and undermining our, our traditional social security payments and systems and so on. And that's, that's not just in Scotland. We, we see that, well, obviously in the rest of the UK, but also in many other countries. Um, Jamie mentioned the, the, the constitutional settlement, independence. And so there's one of the sessions we'll be looking at, what would a UBI look like in an independent Scotland? and so on. So today is, is focused on Scotland. We have other papers from Scotland over the next couple of days, but today we're looking at the local circumstances and so on. So thanks very much to the speakers from Scotland and the participants, and please come along and, and learn from those. And then we'll finish up with the, with the opening plenary, um, which will be include address from the, from the First Minister and others. And then, as Cleo said, that the first of our evening sessions, which should be discussing what we've all learned during the day, but also with some creativity around. And those are going to be exciting and, and try and not compensate, but add to what we'd normally get in a conference rather than just going out for a meal, the pub or whatever, to actually give some local flavour of the culture and such. It's over to whoever's next. So I'll talk a bit about Thursday. Thursday and Friday are the particularly packed days of our programme. So, um, yeah, to make sure that we're all the speakers are getting the kind of uh, audiences that they they deserve, uh, do try and pack it in on Thursday and Friday. Get as many many sessions in your agenda as possible. And um, yeah, loads of incredible things around the sort of seven themes that the Congress is is built around. Um, the programme, yeah, details a bit of that. So again, suggest you give that a read. Um, and pick the pick the things that you you think uh, jump out at you. You know, there's a mix of of very technical right up to the sort of activist and creative um, types of sessions. So whatever you want to get from this conference, hopefully there's something in there for you. And the the plenaries that we have on on Thursday are yeah very exciting. We've had a uh, Sarat the president of BN has done a lot to pull those together. The first session, uh, the first plenary session is, is around a care economy. So must see trust are kind of leading that. We've got some great speakers from, from there, uh, a leading voice on a care economy globally. So um, yeah, definitely not one to miss the, the care economy session. And then in the afternoon, we've got the United Nations Development Programme roundtable session. So we can hear about how uh, basic income fits into the context of that work, which again, a very exciting opportunity opportunity to hear about that during the Congress. Uh, Jamie is going to talk a bit about the Friday programme. So yes, yeah, so by Friday we're already going to have uh, filled our heads with so much but keep going with it because uh, there's such a huge amount of um, fascinating and timely opportunities to explore. We have two uh, main plenaries on the Friday. So uh, middle of the day, we're going to be looking at some of the work that Pope Francis has been carrying out recently in his book, Let Us Dream, where he called, amongst other policies, for a basic income uh, as part of a, a new idea of a social contract uh, across the world. Uh, and that'll be a chance for us to both hear from Austin Ivory, who uh, co-authored that book with Pope Francis. Uh, and some of the work that's been done with communities to try and put that into to vision. Uh, and also hear from other faith communities about how they're reacting to issues of social justice uh, and the challenges that we see with uh, inequality and insecurity across uh, communities in Scotland and beyond. And then at the end of the day, we'll have a plenary looking at cities around the world that are trying to bring basic income into reality uh, in their context. So that will include both the city of Glasgow, our host city, uh, Pittsburgh in, in the US uh, and Budapest in Europe, which will give us different contexts, different examples of how that's been looked at. And that'll be chaired by Sean Mathers from Reform Scotland, a group that have been doing a lot on uh, basic income over the years uh, here in Scotland. Across the rest of the day, there's a, a huge range of different workshops and opportunities. And as been said, we're trying to re uh, record as many of these as possible. So those that you can't join, there'll be opportunities to, to view at a later date. But a real chance to look at different global uh, examples of basic income, whether that's South Korea, China, India, uh, and places it's been looked at. Canada and how we can learn. We've had a lot of collaboration over the years with our colleagues in, in Canada and so much that we can learn from the work they've been doing. So a chance to see what's been developing uh, there. And also seeing the way that impacts uh, basic income can impact around issues such as work and the changing nature of work. 
Um, I think we all know within a, the, the areas that we're covering, this is a critical space where basic income is being explored, particularly, as you said earlier, with the impact of the pandemic. Uh, and so this is a chance to explore. So look at the diary, look at the programme, make sure you get signed up for those, um, for those uh, opportunities that most excite you or most stimulate you or give you new ways of thinking. Uh, I'm going to pass over to Mike, who will take us on to the final day, but I just want to take this opportunity to announce uh, that we mentioned this afternoon the First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, is contributing to the official opening plenary or uh, opening session of uh, Basic Income Congress. Uh, I'm delighted to be able to announce now that the First Minister of Wales, Mark Drakeford, uh, who recently has been putting a huge amount of, of work, has been a supporter of Basic Income over the years, but announced in his most recent uh, election campaign that Wales would be looking to introduce uh, a basic income pilot in the country and is working with our colleagues down there in the, the UBI lab network and others. Uh, I'm delighted to say that Mark's going to be contributing on Saturday morning with a recorded message. So it's fantastic to see that buy-in and interest from the leaders of devolved nations here in the UK uh, and shows that that conversation is very much vibrant here in Scotland, but also with our, our colleagues across the rest of the United Kingdom uh, and beyond. So Mike, I'll pass over to you to run us through the Saturday. Thanks very much, Jamie. Okay, so Saturday morning, um, rather than parallel sessions, we've got, we got three plenaries. Um, we've already mentioned the importance of Korea, South Korea, of um, being a, really a, a forerunner in introducing base income. So we're delighted we've got a special plenary there talking about Korean experience and their plans and proposals to bring in base income in, in parts of South Korea. Um, that will be followed by a, a, a plenary session with our Australian colleagues, um, which will be split into two parts. Um, <clears throat> she hear about and Elisa in a minute will we'll talk about next year's Congress, but <clears throat> we want to have this like an Olympics formal baton handing over session. <clears throat> and then finally, um, because it's very important, important for, for everywhere, it's what, what are the definitions of, of UBI? Is it CBI, is it BI, is it UBI, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there's been quite a lot of work been undertaken by BN, by um, its partners and so on over the last few years in, in do we change the definition? Can we settle on a, a global, a world definition of basic income? And there are a number of sessions of that on that tomorrow and Friday, and those will be brought together in a plenary um, on Saturday morning. And that will really finish off the, the Congress as such and bring it all together. Um, many of you have been extremely tolerant with us of when we put the programme out of letting us know where we haven't spotted clashes and conflicts, and we've tried to accommodate changes wherever possible. One we only, only brought to light again very recently was a session we put on for today, a parallel session, which unfortunately was going to be run by somebody who's in full, no, <clears throat> pardon me, is, is in part-time employment Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So we've had to move that one from today to Saturday morning. So there will be a parallel session and it's slightly different, poetry and performance for young and old and, and basic income. And that's typical of many of the other sort of unusual sessions that will be running throughout the Congress um, with creative people around book launches and so forth. Um, and basically, that, that's it as an introduction from ourselves. But as I said, next year's Congress is in Australia and one of their local organising committee members, Elisa, is now going to speak to us and, and introduce that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mike. Hi, everybody. I'm I'm Elise Klein, and just first want to acknowledge that I'm calling in on the beautiful but unceded lands of the Ngunnawal, and I want to pay my respects to elders, past, present, and emerging. Massive congratulations to everyone that has been part of organising this congress. What extraordinary times to be running a a international. Uh, Congress. So my huge congratulations and my heartfelt thanks for for being um, um, so so warm around. Also think, um, thinking forward to the Australian 
Congress next year. I'm thrilled to be one of the, the members of the BN 20, uh, 2022 um, Australian organising team. Planning is well underway. Um, and at this stage, uh, it will be a, a hybrid. We're looking at a hybrid approach. So um, that means that it will be online as well as face-to-face -face and in person for uh, people who can join us. Um, and that, and there'll be various events in various Australian cities, um, and more information on that will will come. The overall theme for next year's Congress um, is on, on basic income and crisis, um, reflecting the unfolding COVID nineteen crisis, but of course the unfolding uh, climate change crisis, climate climate crisis, and the crisis of inequalities. There's a lot going on uh, about uh, basic income in Australia, uh, and we'll talk more about this in the plenary uh, that, that Mike just mentioned on Saturday morning, uh, and, and we'll be joined there with Greg Marsden, Troy Henderson, and Ben Spies Butcher and myself. Um, so thank you very much once again, and uh, look forward to the days ahead, and also to welcoming everybody in Australia, either virtually or in person next year. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Elise. It's fantastic that you managed to join us this morning. A lot of time difference navigation to, to welcome our Australian colleagues to, to represent the Congress next year. Um, so that's pretty much all we wanted to, to say to you this morning. We wanted to give you an overview of, of what's ex what to expect over the next few days. And I think um, giving you the, the 20 minutes to go have a look through Hoover and have a look around the program is probably uh, the best use of your time. Make some coffee or tea or food or whatever time of day it is where you are, which, whatever you need to accompany uh, the first few sessions of the Congress. Um, but yeah, just another massive thank you to, you know, after months, well, years, in fact, of planning this Congress, it's very heartening to see over 150 people join us for the first for the first session. And um, yeah, delighted to see you all here and uh, for the rest of the week. Really excited to see what, what happens together. Did anyone else want to say anything finally before we say goodbye? They're silently shaking their heads. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> but yeah. Big thanks again, and we'll see you at the next session uh, shortly. Thank you.